Welcome, Digital Trailblazers. This is Leah Ray Getz with the Digital Trailblazer Success Path Podcast, where we feature up and coming online entrepreneurs and see how they're beginning the journey and walk with them through the very first steps of building and growing a very successful online business from the beginning. So, in this episode, we have with us today Dr. Sarah Nasir. Welcome, Dr. Sarah. I'm super excited to have you on. Go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're about. Thank you so much, Leah, for this invitation. I'm really excited to be here and talking with your audience. Um, so I'm Dr. Sarah Nasir. I am a board certified osteopathic family medicine addiction medicine specialist, as well as a coach. So what that basically means is that I make my bread and butter serving people taking care of people. And I do it in a holistic way by paying attention to who they are, not just as a body, but also as a mind, body, spirit. And so when I became a coach um, and I set out to start creating transcendence who live a purpose-driven life to overcome their limits and get that sense of fulfillment, it was just an extension. So I um, approach them, help them connect with all the different dimensions of them to help them advance to the next stage. That's awesome. So Thank when you. you say connect with all the different dimensions, what, like, practically speaking, what does that look like? So practically speaking, um, you know, um, first and foremost, from the physician perspective, from the medical perspective, when I'm talking with the body, um, you know, especially in addiction coaching and addiction treatment, um, I'm definitely prescribing medicines to help close that chemical gap because our body needs help. Um, something I learned in sixth grade is that our body is basically a bag of chemicals and there's mm -hmm. chemical reactions happening all the time. Um, but um, where this comes in is that with the medicines that I'm prescribing, I'm helping create, recreate that homeostasis, the balance in the body that it has lost the ability to do over, uh, you know, the progress of disease setting in and progressing. Um, however, our health is not just taking medicines or cutting and surgeries. Um, it's also how we live, um, you know, exercise, healthy diet. And then from the osteopathic principle, that's part of my medical education, is that we need to also take into account the mental health aspect of it, such as, you know, if you have depression, treating that anxiety, any PTSD, you know, things that is invisible to the eye, and there's no mm -hmm. lab to pick it up or imaging to diagnose it. But it's an important part of how we feel, you know, how we show up. And then the other part, because our founder of Osteopathic Principles was a pastor, uh, Andrew T. Still. And so he brought spirituality to it. Um, at the time that he was practicing, you know, medicine was very much like, uh, what is it, the uh, civil war style medicine, where if you get shot in the leg, you lose the leg. <laughs> There's no other thoughts into like how it impacts you as a person, your family life. Um, so taking that soul into the picture and the connection. Um, and so what that also allows is, you know, to be open and receptive to all the different other sciences that can be used to amplify your health and your existence as a human. Um, and so going to the coaching as I'm learning more about how to uh, reprogram the brain using neuro-linguistic programming with my knowledge of how the brain works, how neurons are developed, connections are made. Um, it almost feels like I'm a computer engineer, but for like a much bigger CPU there. So you know, resetting the mindset, telling That's your awesome. brain, what to focus on, the news feed that it should be looking at. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited That's, to talk about geeky yeah. stuff. I love that. I'm So I was a registered nurse. Oh, okay. and I, I came around and, and it started in the online business space and through this have been woken up to like very holistic yeah. um, medicine and treating the whole person and, and all of this kind of stuff and a set of um, alternatives outside of the traditional Western practices. Um, so that sounds very cool to me. So mm -hmm. how did you go from like a DO and like doctor in, I assume in the clinic kind of situation to now, like what was your journey into coaching specifically? Yeah. Um, so the first part of my life thus far has been 
um, getting established as a physician um, and then catching up on life, like having kids, um, because, you know, a lot of those things get put on hold because um, although it is such a giving field, it takes so much out of you and it doesn't allow you to put enough back into you. Mm -hmm. Um, So after I had my baby in 2022, um, I think all the postpartum hormone dysfunction as well as like, you know, that causes the postpartum anxiety, depression, it just basically broke all the barriers I had left and all the things, tiny things that you worry about, like, you know, oh my gosh, global warming, what's gonna, <laughs> what's gonna happen to my kids? Will they have bees to pollinate the crops? You know, will they all, what will go extinct? So simple things like that was mm-hmm. waking me up, you know, thoughts that, it, that I could like push aside no longer had any filter. So 4 a.m. at night, after I fed my baby, everybody else is sleeping, but I'm like, okay, do I have to wake up again? Then all these thoughts like come rushing out. Mm -hmm. And so what happened at that time was, now looking back hindsight, is that I believe it was my soul's callings that was Mm -hmm. calling out to me, but over uh, the years, we kind of tune it out because right. we set goal on like this. These are the milestones we have to check off on our right. to-do list, on our bucket list, right? Um, instead of realizing that we have certain gifts, certain talents that makes us uniquely qualified to do um to accomplish something, which is to live our purpose. And so basically um, I was laying there in bed, like I'm a spiritual person, I believe in God, like asking God, like let my purpose be something good. And then voila, in a few months after that, I start to come across classes. It's like, build your legacy, plan your legacy for the next 10 years. So there's that starts. And I put crazy thoughts in, like I'm gonna, do something about the plastic pollution as well, (laughs) you know? Um, And then over time, I come across coaching. I had no Mm -hmm. idea what coaching was until like 2023. And Mm -hmm. then, um, (coughs) excuse me, as I start my journey into basically learning about myself and figuring out um, how to connect with my brain, with my thoughts, um, Mm -hmm. slowly the world started to evolve And I realized that coaching is one of the ways for me to accomplish the legacy that I want to do. And so I started quite a few businesses during this time span that I'm still growing. Um, And even though they're in their early stage, um, Mm -hmm. I have no doubt it's only a matter of time before they start to bear the fruits. And that's what people want to see, right? Um, So it's coming. What, um, What I say is like when you're trying to get your want to be green, you don't put one seed at a time, you put quite a few grass seeds at the same time. So I feel like I'm in that um, seedling stage, my seedlings are sprouting. And um, yeah, I think pretty soon, it's just a matter of time before it bears fruit. I love that. So what, uh, like, what excites you the most about coaching um, versus sort of the traditional path? Um, I think with coaching, the concept of being able to hack your brain, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's the most exciting part that has been for me when I've been working with my clients and going through those sessions and hacking the brain in a way that consciously being able to reprogram what the algorithm, I'm going to use the algorithm word here, because I think the social media uh, feed is a very fascinating um, way of thinking about what happens in our brain, where Mm -hmm. in our conscious level, we focus on what our brain thinks is important to us. So it starts to put things in our forefront, um, in our vision and our awareness things that it thinks needs to be on our newsfeed uh, versus we have so many other things, all these inputs that are coming in into our subconscious level. Um, And so being able to reframe that uh, algorithm of what needs to be in the forefront that I want to be successful, 
I want all of my seeds to grow into like fruits. You know, now I have no time or space left to feel hopeless. That was a feeling that I was feeling before, you know, that I brought these beautiful souls. Now, what is the purpose? Do I just continue just cruise control until I grow old and I die and on my, uh, you know, gravestones be like, here lies Dr. Nasir. She saved a few people and that's it, <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. I mean, that sounds like a great tombstone um, <laughs> message for sure, but it doesn't feel my soul. It doesn't make me right. feel like I'm doing what I'm set out to, what, what, what I'm here to do. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. So what are some of your proudest moments um, and successes that you've had as you started working with people on the coaching side of things? Um, hearing their feedbacks. I think that has been the biggest gratification for me that when they're, excuse me, <coughs> getting over a cold, um, the feedbacks they give me that, you know, this they've never experienced this level of excitement before, this level of safety, connection, groundedness, clarity, mm -hmm. you know, um, I feel like that is the most rewarding thing to help somebody else reach that clarity that they have, they can do what they set out, they set their mind to do, mm -hmm. or just to understand that, you know, to feel comfortable in their own body first yeah. and foremost, then in that's, their lives. Yeah, that's awesome. So who, who's like your perfect coaching client? Um, I think my perfect coaching clients are people who have ambition that they want to, um, you know, find what is the next thing that they want to do. They might have some idea in their head, but they feel hesitant to do something about it. Um, and, you know, it's because they think they need approval from somebody else or they don't have what it takes um mm -hmm. for, like my approach is to help you understand that you have done it already if you have come this far in life you have done it it's just in a different clothing in a different mm -hmm. attire so now just take that accomplishment and <clears throat> translate it and adapt it to the next thing that you want to do and i have another niche so i have two mm -hmm. niches that i work okay. with the other one is, um, you know, those who are struggling with substance uh, use disorder. Um, if, if you yourself or somebody you love is struggling with it um, and they just um, they're at a stage where they are done with it, but they just can't move on because they just feel stuck at the bottom of a hole. Uh, mm -hmm. My coaching acts like helping them find the sun in their horizon, the sun that helps them propel forward instead of trying to climb up, being pulled up. So I feel I like, like that. that would be uh, a good fit. Yeah, I think that's powerful. Um, and, and just it's forward facing, right? It's moving towards versus avoiding. So I think that's wonderful. So what's working for you right now for finding new clients? Um, the podcast appearances, actually podcast appearances, okay. networking, being in a, you know, uh, being in groups where people know each other. And, but the f most important thing has been podcast because when I'm coming and talking, people are hearing, I think they feel the passion and they feel the connection when they hear me. So that is, that has been my biggest success so far. Yeah. No, I love that. So, mm -hmm. Um, where, like, what, what are your plans for growth this year? I mean, we're just at the beginning of the year. So what is this, what's your goal? What are your goals for the business side of the coaching? So right now I'm working on hiring a marketing team. I think that's what I need is client acquisition, lead generation, um, because once I'm able to connect, I know I will deliver and my clients will leave satisfied. It's just, um, having that matchmaker to help us meet, you know? So yeah. that's what I'm looking at right now. That's awesome. Um, I think that's great. I think investing in your marketing is one of the best things that businesses can do because clearly it, in order to have a business, you need revenue. Revenue comes from making sales. So you have to have that pipeline filled. You need really good systems. You need really good messaging and you need traffic um, mm -hmm. to make this successful. 
I, I love more than an agency model. Okay. So for people getting started, oftentimes it sounds really good for folks. Um, I just want to outsource it, let them do let them take it. That is a steep hill to climb and not something that we typically advise for folks. Um, there's a, a lot of big promises in that space and, um, very difficult to find something that pays off really well. And on top of that, like my philosophy is that people need to know how to run their business, at least at the beginning stages, right? That they are learning the basics on how to set up their systems, how to set up their process. What does it take to bring in new clients so that, cause you're going to be the one who has to brainstorm this long-term, like, right. You're the one that needs to be able to manage this as you grow. So, mm-hmm what we really believe in is helping people learn, get their system set up, get the process set up, get this chugging along. And then as you grow, say you get to 30, $50,000 a month in coaching. Okay. Now we are getting to numbers where it kind of makes sense to start outsourcing parts of this, but then you'll be much better at, um, at hiring because you know, like you have a really good base knowledge to work from. Um, and you know what your, KPIs or what you would expect of yourself. And so, you know, if they're not hitting them and so you can be a much better consumer and and customer for them as well. So, um, yeah, but I think getting your systems in place, um, potentially, you know, even just a basic lead magnet funnel, building up your own Facebook community where you're nurturing them there, um, having a good email follow-up sequence, maybe driving some paid traffic, um, to get in front of the right people. I love podcast guesting. It's really powerful. I like to think of it more of like icing on the cake though, Mm -hmm. because it's kind of hit or miss like, and you can, you know, it's great to do, keep doing it. Um, but it's not something you're in total control over. So Mm -hmm. I prefer to have total control over the meat and potatoes, like the the bread and butter of your business and then sprinkle in, um, you know, once, twice a week doing in some podcast guesting to, you know, increase your exposure and to potentially generate some additional leads. Yeah, I totally hear you uh my journey so far so i've done a few of my own uh you know trying to develop a funnel um trying to do that community growth but i think my biggest handicap right now because i have a full-time job as well and running like three or four businesses um trying to get them up and going what i'm finding is that um i'm falling behind on time Uh, finding that time is becoming really hard for me. And these are brand new skills for me. So I think at this point, it makes more sense to ask for help than trying to do it all by myself. Um, Yeah. Have you thought about bringing someone in internally? So Um, that's typically what I like the second best option, right? When people are super busy and they got lots lots of things going on is bring someone in house who's going to stay with you long term that they're part of the business, part of the organization, even if it's just a profit share. So you're not even paying them right up front, but there's someone who has the time, they're Mm -hmm. sharp, they're driven, um, they're they're a go-getter and they're hungry, right? I've tried that within the group of, you know, people that I know that have accomplished some great community projects with. I've actually reached out to a few of them to bring them on, Um, but it, didn't work out very well. I feel like I have to train them where, you know, I myself don't have a lot of knowledge on this marketing aspect. Oh, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So typically what we'd say, you know, bring in a team member to work Mm -hmm. on it and then get the coaching or get the support to train up and and create the processes and systems internally within your organization. Um, But with the coaching help and, and whatever that is actually needed to learn the skills and the systems and processes that you need. But Um, I think it's, it's awesome to work on figuring out the marketing piece because that's clearly huge and and what's critical to your growth. Um, what, like if people are really interested in you and what you do and how you help people, where should they find you online? Yeah. Um, so I'm very active on Facebook. That's the best place that showcases most of my work. Um, so I'm, uh, you can find me as transcendent you, uh, I also have a website. It is also under development. Um, it's bit.ly slash transcendent T R A N S C E N D A N T. Uh, there's an intentional misspelling there. (laughs) Um, 
So that would be the best place to reach, uh, find me. And then to, you can also email me at transcendentyou at gmail.com. Perfect. And we will have all of the links and information there um, for you that she's provided in the description of this video. This has been so much fun. I really like what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for giving me the chance to come and, you know, share. And thank you for giving me those advice. I mean, um, it was really helpful to learn about, you know, you mentioned that thinking about hiring somebody internally. Um, that is something I would like to do. But I think first I need to get some, I need help with somebody setting up the funnel for me is what I'm feeling okay. right now. Okay. And then after I have it, then it would be a lot easier to come and bring somebody and be like, this is what's working. Let's continue it. Sounds good. That's what are awesome. your thoughts on that? I... Uh, I'll tell a story. How about that? So I recently met with a friend locally here who had kind of forgotten what we do. We don't, I mean, we're all online, so we don't do a lot in our local market. Um, so she didn't, she just remembered what we did. And she said, Hey, my husband's been trying to get his financial coaching business up and running and it's just not working. Can we just meet and talk and, and see what's going on? He, over the last year, has spent $40,000 on different agencies. And he has yet to see a single funnel hmm. created hmm. that it was a lot of excuses. This was coming, hold on, like all this kind of stuff. And it was multiple agencies, multiple situations. So I, I, I wish that was um, not the most common um, type of story that I hear for getting your initial stuff set up, but it mm -hmm. is. So like, honestly, like, so if, if I put my, if, put myself in your shoes. I would look who's someone who's young, sharp, tech savvy, hungry mm -hmm. in my personal sphere. Maybe it's a niece, a nephew or, or someone. Um, and, and tell them what your vision, what you're looking to do and that you're willing to, um, invest in them to learn skills that are incredibly valuable to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and allow them a huge opportunity as um, a profit share in your revenue or something like that, right? So you don't have to pay them up front, but they're getting mm -hmm. an education and then get a program or get a coach that works directly with them. And so they're learning and, and but they're, you know, obviously someone has to be really committed to you and the process, but then you would have your organization has access to all of the training and all of the resources. If, Worst case scenario, they move on to something else, mm -hmm. right? But that you're building up your team members, um, you know, with people that you really trust that are really committed and just empowering them with the tools that mm -hmm. they need to be successful. And, and, and yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, that'd be my recommendation. Yeah. I'm thinking about who can I think of in my vicinity? Um, I, I think I already tried the route and it was hard because um, they have, th this is not their interest is what I'm yeah. finding. And yeah, so you have to get the right person. It's not going to, yeah. So yeah. definitely going to keep looking. What do you think about agencies that promise you a certain number of clients at least? Otherwise they don't get paid or uh, otherwise they don't finish the payment getting paid. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of big guarantees that never in the fine print are written so that they don't follow through on that. If there's someone out there who's willing to have a very minimal fee and then is paid off of commissions or something, or maybe that's different, mm -hmm. but, the, but they're typically going to want a significant lump up front yeah. and the, the fine print, like how often do they ever give those? Mm -hmm. Probably not very often. Okay. So there's a That's... lot of over promising um, and under delivering it when it comes to guarantees in the digital marketing space, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what I'm kind of in conversation with. So this was yeah. helpful. This was helpful. Okay, Do you have any <laughs> recommendation for navigating that? Um, find some good people, even just some people that you trust and have some real conversations. Not that they're necessarily trying to sell you something. But um, someone that they would like, if see if they know someone mm -hmm. who they would like recommend to a family member. 
right? So someone who's successful, who you trust, who you can have that and just an open and honest conversation with and say, okay, who would you actually recommend? Um, that's, it's a, it's a challenge, but. Recommend for working with me or like somebody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For, for an agency or for, uh, um, someone who's hungry to, to master the digital marketing space too. I guess you could do it that way as well. Got it. Well, okay. thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This was a very helpful conversation. I appreciate it. Very timely. <laughs> Oh, good. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so thank much. You. This has been, I think, also very helpful for our audience. We and um, yes, thank you. We'll take care. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you.